This is Justin Matabuka from Texas A&M, one of the newest Baltimore Ravens, a day two pick, interior D lineman. And um, before we get into the film, I want to show you and kind of read to you what the, the scouts, the expert scouts say um, are his best traits. And first one, gap penetration skills, potent first step, good lateral quickness for L steps to swap gaps quickly at the snap and transition up to field. He's light on his feet and nimble to attack daylight out of his stands or work across the face of blockers and head up scenarios. Plays through contact successfully. I'm going to try to show you that on film. The next one, flexibility. Shows a fairly dynamic base in his stands and good hip hinge to coil and anchor as needed. There's good lateral lean as well as to turn a corner as a tight rusher. I'm sorry, to turn the corners tight as a rusher. He'll drop inside shoulder and get the tight apex on his rushes and get into the bite of the quarterback against guards, which that, that definitely is on there. His, his leverage, his understanding of leverage is, is phenomenal. Pass rush counters. Powerful hands are complemented with his footwork to gain ground and pair hand strikes with his penetration steps. Rips through contact well and has successfully bullied guards in the mesh against numerous opponents. Have seen him push and pull, push and pull to create turn shoulders. Versatility. Got worked in a lot of alignments, and that's you know you'll see in the tape. He's a zero, one, and a three, and found disruption in all of them. Like him, I like him as a stunt defender as well. Smooth peeling behind a teammate and accelerating through the vacated space can win at the NFL level as a three tech or five tech with little issue and rush head up over the center in obvious pass situations. And lastly, his summary of Justin Matabuke, he projects favorably in numerous defensive fronts, implemented as a zero tech nose tackle in rush situations, three tech and also a base end. There's versatility here that makes Matabuke an appealing player in a number of different fronts. His explosiveness is best implemented in a penetration role and shouldn't be bothered with trying to stack or two gap blocks for best results. There's some polish needed for consistency's sake, but this is a future NFL starter up front. This is your new player, Justin Matabuke, Baltimore Ravens. So looking at Justin Matabuke's film, I was going to do the LSU and the Alabama game but I think the LSU game showed me all I needed to see to um, you know to warm up to this pick and and look at it look at it as a pick for the future uh, a guy that you know can can get in the rotation this year but eventually become a star once he uh, you know gets the full um, NFL experience behind it but this game versus LSU he pretty much was against two of the um, top interior linemen in, in this year's draft. Uh, Lewis, who was selected um, on day two, and Cushenberry, who was selected on day two. Uh, Lewis went before Cushenberry. I don't remember the pick numbers. But um, this game, I'm sure the, the game plan was to double-team Matabuke as much as possible. Because for the most part, Cushenberry and Lewis double-teamed him all game. But when he was able to get solo blocks, he excelled at them. He excelled. And he didn't make a lot of plays, so it's not a lot of stats on it. But he made a lot of plays. So we got nine clips I'm about to show you. Let's get into the first one. This is uh, Justin Matabuke, the newest Baltimore Raven. So there it is. And before we get started... They lined him up at zero, which is nose, one, and three. So you'll see those alignments throughout this film. This one, he's in one technique. Initially doubled by, you know, not doubled, but paid attention to by Cushenberry, but this, the sole responsibility by Lewis. Now, at this point, he's finally getting a one-on-one -on -one block. There's no double team. It's just him and Lewis one on one. And Lewis is for the most part winning this block because even though they're hand fighting and jostling, he's not getting any depth in, or, or getting any closer to um, 
bro, I mean, if you can see, look at the pocket. The pocket's perfect at this point. This is what impressed me with this clip. He broke the pocket. He uh, with a great spin move off Lewis, so he's gotten rid of Lewis. And now he's about to chase the quarterback, almost from the opposite hash to the sideline. Only really giving up about two yards, maybe two yards. And I think this is considered a sack because I'm not really sure what the line of scrimmage was. And he got a hit on the quarterback, a legal hit on the quarterback. I don't think they caught. I don't think that was a horse collar. It might look like, but I don't think it was. But just look at look at him run for for one tick or three tick. It's fairly decent speed. I don't know his forty time. Drop his forty time in the uh, comment section if you know it. Let's go on to play two. There he is right there, um, and they really didn't get lined up on this play. Really didn't get lined up. But he's right there. He's he's he he attacked the left guard. Cushionberry tried to double him, but he attacked the left guard so hard and just went straight to the left guard that Cushionberry's block kind of pushed him, like like uh, juiced him past the left guard even more. Now look where he's at. Right there in the position to make the tackle on the on the running back. Him him and and uh, Clyde are face to face. Nowhere for him to go. All because it, there was initial confusion. He just decided, I'm going to go. I'm just going. I'm just going. I'm just going hard, and it, which is a good thing. And we tell a lot of kids that when, you, when you're confused or you don't know, just go hard. We can, we can excuse it if you're going hard. And really, this play is really made by – it's really just four people involved in this play. Matabuke, Cushionberry, the left guard, and uh, Clyde. Everybody else is almost not relevant right now. And yet, you know, you get other guys in maroon or whatever color Texas A&M have on the tackle, but this is all matter bouquet. All athleticism. Let's go to the next one. He, now he's in a, a nose, a, a zero technique. One on Cush Bear. Look at the bull rush. Look at the bull rush. And you know, some people criticize Cush. You're saying he had low pass rush numbers. This may be one of the reasons why, but and there's not a stat for this. But it's just the fact that the quarterback has to see his center coming right back to his face. I know he see it. So I gotta get rid of this ball quick before I get sacked. It's not a it's not a stat that's gonna say this is a it, it might be pressure, but just look at how fast he puts Cushionberry in his face. And one thing about Matabuke does, he knows how to play with leverage. He's square, look at his shoulder square now, but once he gets into contact, he gets him low. He tries to get under guys. Playing with leverage is, is uh, one of the biggest things defensive linemen and edge guys can do, play with leverage. The low man gonna win. Get low, dry your feet. Look at that. He drives Cushionberry back. Let's say this is it's about three yards. It's about five yards. Basically puts him in Joe Burrow's lap. And Burrow can see that. Even though he's trying to slide step and he got good pocket presence. He, he sees that guy getting pushed in his lap and makes sure he gets rid of the ball. Again, at the nose. This time he gets a one-on-one -on -one with 70. So watch how fast he goes from here to crossing 70 in his face. Boom, just that face. Just that face. Then this A-gap, I'm going to cross your face with a little stutter step and go straight to B-gap. And that's one of the things that as a as an offensive lineman, it's like a sin. Don't let people cross your face. But now look at the leverage again. He's the low, he's way lower than 70. He's, he's holding him off with that left arm. Holding him off with that left arm. Got his shoulder pass, and now he's going to take that same left arm and try to knock the left arm of the guard down. Right there. Now he's basically won this block because all he got to do is get rid of him. Now he didn't make the tackle. You want, you, you want him to finish right here. You want him to finish right here. But Burrow's pocket presence is, is impeccable. But he forced the play. 
You want him to finish, but he forced to play. You can we can live with that. Now he is a zero again, nose again. It's gonna be a long stunt. That's what you see on the screen. It's gonna be a long stunt with this with this edge guy out here. It's gonna be an extremely long stunt. Playing games. Look what he does to Sadiq Charles. Look how he has him like on skates almost. Boom. That lateral that lateral agility from a from a zero. Look at that. <laughs> that lateral agility from a zero. Maybe stop and start like that. Step this way, or you going this way, I'm gonna step right back. That's almost point guard like. That's almost guys that big shouldn't be able to move like that. If you see 77 can't do it. And it what you know, even though he using his hands, that wasn't much that wasn't much with his hands. That was just change of direction. Just change of direction. That's it. Just simple change of direction. He mimicking where Burrow's going. Burrow going up. Okay, I'm going to go up. Burrow going back. I'm going to go back. Right here to get this tackle. So when he wasn't being double teamed, he, he held his own against this LSU um, O-line. Right now he's in a, what's that, a two? He's in a two. One on one with Lewis. One-on-one -on -one with Lewis, finally. Get a one-on-one -on -one block. Let me slow it down. Get a one-on-one -on -one block. Him and Lewis one-on-one. -on -one. They're right, right here. Look how, he, look how he extend. Look how he extend on Lewis. Got him, got his neck, got Lewis's neck popped way back just by using that right arm. But at this point, he's won his block. Cause he's held this gap and he has leverage on Lewis. So now all he has to do is just get rid of him and go straight to the quarterback. Simple. When he got one on one blocks, he held his own versus this this great LSU O line. Look at him press him out. So it lets me know he's strong too. Cause Lewis is strong. He pressed Lewis straight out. With both hands. Now I'm gonna get rid of you because the whole time he pressed him out, look at him turning his hips to stay in his gap. Got a bundle. Now, as he presses him out further back, watch his hips just ease into that gap. Let him moving his feet. Let him moving his feet. Now, and look at the gap integrity by the, the Texas A&M. This guy got C gap, and the bouquet has B. Linebackers coming here for A. That's great gap integrity right there, and all of them won their gap integrity on this play. And go to quarterback. I mean, they got a completion out of it, but Burroughs, the LSU was different on offense. <laughs> they they were different on offense. <laughs> Where is he now? Where is he now? All right, he's playing three technique now. Playing three. So he may get a solo block again with, with Lewis. Start right, running games. Watch how quick he gets, gets in his A gap. So he's going to go from this, what's this, this B gap to this up to the weak side A in a flash. Right there. And that's probably where the ball was going. Probably where the ball was going. There to make the tackle for a tackle for loss. But again, the jump cut by this dude, and he's special too. He was a first round pick. He just couldn't catch it. He's where he's supposed to be. The way he's supposed to be. Great quickness, great lateral quickness for an uh, interior D lineman. Clyde just made a better play on him. Clyde just happened to out, be faster than him, that's all. The other guys should have been able to make the tackle. Matt Bouquet did his job right there. The play's blown up right there. The initial play's supposed to hit right up in here. Matt Bouquet made sure that didn't happen. But all these other guys are kind of out of position. That guy slips. And they get some yards out of it. Not matter Bouquet's fault. He did his job. All right now he's playing um, a one. Mm, easy. 
gets a solo block versus 73. He this textbook grip, dip, and rip. The first move you learn as a, as a D lineman, textbook. Grip, dip, and rip. That's it. That's perfect. This this teaching tape right here for a for young defensive lineman. Grip, dip, and rip through. And again, he don't get the he don't get a stat for it, but he makes the play. Cause it's because of that move. He makes the play because of that move. And that's how you get pass rush as an interior defense lineman. Now you put somebody on the edge that can go too. You got yourself up. Some some good pass rush coming. I can see him find working his way into our, our, our third down packages. If he can, you know, kind of perfect that on the next level. And again, he didn't force the play, but he was part of the reason this was incomplete because things get a, didn't get a chance to set up. But at LSU just offensively, they were so good that a lot of people, this, this is a sack against a lot of teams. This is a sack against a lot of teams. That's the number one pick they're trying to, ch trying to chase down. With a, with two um, two day two interior O lineman up there, probably going to get a, a a day three tackles up there too. So that's probably four of those five guys about to get drafted. And you got you know a first round running back, two first round receivers. This is just special. But anyway, last play for Matabuke. For the Matabuke film. Right here, he's in a um, one technique. Getting doubled again. But at this point, he just said, forget it. I'm tired of it. Because this is later on in the game. He's going to get doubled again by Cushion Barry and Lewis. And what he does right here, let me see if I can stop it. That's the textbook double. Lewis and Cushion Bear are hip to hip. As a coach, that's what you teach. You got to be hip to hip on this double team. Now, um, at this point, even though they double teamed him, they didn't move. They didn't move him. He held his own. He got lower than them, and they didn't move him. It was a double team, but they didn't move him. And so when Lewis decides to come off, Cushion Bear is at, at, like, ain't nothing he could do because the play is blown up because he didn't. they didn't move him. They double teamed him, but did not move him at all. He got low. He held his ground and fought it off. So when the ball carrier comes, now he got to adjust because there's no hold. There was no movement. There's no movement out of one technique. The point of attack is the one technique. Most double teams are the point of attack. They didn't get movement, which is a win for the defensive line. You can get double team, but if you don't get, if they don't get movement out of it, it's, it's wasted. It's wasted. And by him sitting there and holding that spot and, and giving that, giving his back to, to Lewis, which not allowing Cushionberry to move him, it's great fundamentals. And again, he don't make the play, but he makes the play for other people. He don't make the play, but he makes the play for other people. I like it. I like it. Uh, didn't like it at first, but the more it, it, it sits with me, I, I like it more, especially for the future with um, the way the cap situation. You got to factor in cap and production and player in this in this draft because we're gonna have to have a mass we got some massive paydays coming up. We got a good team, they're young, and they're gonna want to get paid soon. But this is the the recap for Justin Matabuke, Texas AM, uh one of the newest Baltimore Ravens day two draft pick. Uh and this is Coach Evans with Sip Italian Films. Thank you for coming. See you when I see you. Peace. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. So go on over to patreon.com backslash tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans and again thanks everyone for the support and head on over to patreon.com backslash tally. <laughs>